Hi everybody, welcome back to a new PyTorch tutorial. This time we implement logistic regression. If you've watched the previous tutorials, then this should be very easy now. Once again, we implement our typical PyTorch pipeline with those three steps. So first we set up our model. We define the input and output size and the forward pass. Then we create the loss and the optimizer functions. And then we do the actual training loop with the forward pass, the backward pass and the weight updates. The code here should be very similar to the code in the last tutorial where we implemented linear regression. We only have to make slight adjustments for the model and the loss function. So we add one more layer to our model and we select a different loss function from PyTorch built in functions. So let's start. First of all, let in, let's import some things that we need. So we import torch, of course, and we import torch.nn as nn, so the neural network module. Then we import numpy as np to make some data transformations. Then from sklearn, we import data sets to load a binary classification uh, data set. Then from sklearn.preprocessing we want to import standard scalar because we want to scale our features. And then from sklearn.model selection we import train test split because we want to have a separation of training and testing data. And now let's do our three steps. So first we want to set up the model. Then we want to set up the loss and the optimizer. And then in the third step we do the actual training loop. And as a step zero we want to prepare the data. So let's do this. So let's load the breast cancer data set from sklearn. So we can say bc equals data sets dot load breast cancer. This is a binary classification problem where we can predict cancer based on the input features. So let's say x and y equals bc dot data and bc dot target. And then we want to say, well, first of all, let's get the, get the number of samples and the number of features by saying this is x dot shape. Um, so let's print this first. So print the number of samples and the number of features to see how our data set looks like. And we see we have 569 samples and 30 different features. So a lot of features here. And now let's continue and let's split our data when we say X train and X test and X test and Y train and Y test equals here we can use the train test split function where we put in x and y and we want to be the test size to be 20 percent so this is 0.2 and let's also give this a random state equals let's say one two three four and this should be a small s. And now let's convert, or first of all, now we want to scale our features, scale them. Here we set up a standard scalar, sc equals standard scalar, which will make our features to have zero mean and unit variance. This is always recommended to do uh, when we want to deal with uh, a logistic regression. So now we scale our data. So we say x train equals sc dot fit transform. And then as an input we put in x train. 
And then we want to do the same thing with our test data. So we say x test equals sc dot here we only transform it. Um, and here we put in x test. Now we scaled our data. Now we want to convert it to uh, torch tensors. So let's say x train equals torch dot and then here we can use the function from numpy. And then we put in x train and cast this to a flow 32 data type. So we say x train dot s type numpy dot float 32. Because right now this is of type double and then we would run into some errors later. So let's cast this and convert this to a tensor. And now let's do this with all the other arrays. So let's say x test equals um, this and our y train and also our y test tensor um, y test. And now as a last thing to prepare our data is to reshape our y uh, tensors. So y train equals y train dot view. This is a built in function from PyTorch that will reshape our tensor with the given size. So it gets the size y train um, dot shape zero and one. So right now our y has only one row and we want to make it a column vector. So we want to put each value in one row with only one column. So this will do exactly this. And also for our y test. So y test equals this y test. And now we are think we are done with our data preparing. So now let's set up our model. And here our model is a linear combination of weights and a bias. And then in the logistic regression case, we apply a sigmoid function at the end. So let's do this. And for this, we want to write our own class. So let's call this model. Or we can also call this uh, logistic regression. Logistic regression. And this must be derived from nn dot module. And then this will get a init, which has self and then it gets the number of input features. And here first we call the super in it. So let's say super logistic regression and self dot in it. And then here we define our layer. So we only have one layer self dot linear equals and here we can use the built in layer n n dot linear. And this gets the input size so n input features. And the output size is just one. So we only want to have one value one class label at the end. And then we also have to implement the forward pass here which has self and the data and our forward pass is first we apply the linear layer and then the sigmoid function. So here we say y predicted equals torch dot sigmoid. So this is also a built in function that we can use. And here we apply our self dot linear layer. So linear layer with our data x and then we return our y predicted. 
So this is our model and now let's create this. So model equals logistic regression of size. And here we put in the number of features that we have. So now our layer is of size 30 by one. And no, sorry, 30 input features and one output feature. And now we have our model. And now we can continue with the loss and the optimizer. So for a loss, the loss function now is different than in the linear regression case. So here we say criterion equals nn dot bce loss. So the binary cross entropy loss here. And our optimizer is the same. So this can be um, this is torch dot optim dot s g d for stochastic gradient descent. And this gets some parameters that we want to optimize. So here we just say model dot parameters. And it also needs a learning rate. So let's say our learning rate equals 0 0.01. And then here we say LR equals learning rate. So now this is step two. And now step three. So let's define some number of epochs equals let's say 100 iterations. And now we do our training loop. So now we do four epoch in range num epochs. And then first we do the forward pass, forward pass and the loss calculation. Then we do the backward pass and then we do the updates. So let's say y predicted equals here we call our model. Um, and as theta it gets x train. And then we say loss equals criterion. And this will get a the y predicted and the actual y training. So the training samples or the training labels. And now we do the backward pass and calculate the gradients. And again, we simply have to call loss dot, dot backward and PyTorch will do all the calculations for us. And now we update our weights. So here we simply have to say optimizer dot step. And again, PyTorch will do all the update calculations for us. And then we don't, well, we must not forget to empty our gradients again. So want to zero the gradients because the backward function here will always add up all the gradients into the dot grad attribute. So let's empty them again before the next iteration. And we simply must say optimizer dot zero grad. And then let's also print some information if epoch plus one modulo 10 equals equals zero. So every 10th step, we want to print some information. Let's use an F string here. Um, let's say epoch. And here we can use epoch plus one. And then we also want to see the loss. So the loss equals loss dot item. And let's format this to say to only print four decimal values. And yeah, so now we are done. This is our um, logistic regression implementation. And now let's evaluate our model. So the evaluation should not be part of our computational graph where we want to track the history. So we want to say with torch dot no grad and then do our evaluation here. So here I want to get the accuracy. So let's get all the predicted classes from our test um, samples. So let's say this is model 
and here we put in x test and then let's convert this to a class label so zero or one so remember the sigmoid function here will return a value between zero and one and if this is larger than 0.5 we say this is class one and otherwise it's class zero so let's say y predicted classes equals y predicted dot round so here we can use a built-in function again and this will do exactly this and yeah so if we do, don't use this statement then this would be part of the computational graph and it would track the gradient calculations for us so here we don't want this we don't need this because we are done so that's why we use this with statement here and now let's calculate the accuracy by saying ac equals y predicted classes and here we can call the equal function equals y test and then the sum so we want to sum them up for every prediction that is correct it will uh, add plus one and then we divide this by the number of samples of test samples so y test dot shape uh, zero this will return the number of test samples and then let's print our accuracy print accuracy equals um, ac dot point for f also only for decimal values and now let's run this and hope that everything is correct and standard scalar has no attribute transform so here i have a typo transform now let's run this again transform one more try and now we are done and we have a accuracy of 0.89 so it's okay it's good but it's not perfect so you might want to play around with for example the number of iterations and where do we have it the number of epochs or the learning rate for example or also maybe try out a different optimizer here but basically yeah that's how we implement logistic regression i hope you liked it if you liked it please sub subscribe to the channel and see you next time bye